I can't imagine uh, someone who enjoys cars and building cars and building self-driving cars and figuring out where the future of cars is going to go and has broken every rule in building cars and somehow managed to have created just an amazing company. I still remember the first car I bought from him. My only question for Elon at the time was, are you going to be around to service this car if something happened to it? And he says, no, trust me. And look what happened. What an amazing achievement. I have all three versions of his cars. It just gets better and better. Not only does it get better and better, each version gets better and better. It just delights me to no end when I get an OTA in the morning, you know, and, and I read it and I go, oh, wow, all these features. I didn't even pay for it. I'm not suggesting that I'm willing to pay more for it. But ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tesla CEO, founder, Elon Musk. Elon, come on up. I've never seen anybody walk this slow. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Guys, Elon Musk. Here's Hi. Something. Now, uh, you, you know, we made it a point not to rehearse anything. And so as, I just wanted, as a just a reminder, you're, you're my last thing. Okay. Okay, could you not ruin the whole thing? All right. All right, so remember, now, <laughs> speaking of that, I think everybody would like to, before we get into all of the good stuff, Okay. Um, and, and they want to go directly to the juicy stuff. Okay. Okay. And the juicy stuff is this. Uh, look, you know, um, you were quoted as a saying that artificial intelligence is more dangerous than nuclear weapons. And, I said and, potentially. <laughs> and, and, well, it goes on. And it does say, go on. You, you, say, you say that it's like summoning the demon. Could be. <laughs> How do you consolidate, rationalize the, the, the conflict between artificial intelligence, of course, deep learning that, that obviously is going to be very important to self-driving cars? How do you think through that? Well, I, I don't think we have to worry about uh, autonomous cars because that's sort of like a narrow form of AI. And instantly, I, not something that I think is very difficult, actually. I think the, to, to do autonomous driving to a degree that's much safer than a person is much easier than people think. Yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to just become normal. Like, it'll be like an elevator. Like, no, they used to have elevator operators. And then we, you know, we developed some simple circuitry to have elevators just automatically come to the floor that you, you're at, and you just press the button, and you, no, nobody needs to operate the elevator. It, the car is just going to be like that. And the elevators these days are even smart. I mean, it knows, it knows where to position an elevator so that uh, if you were to need an elevator, it's pretty close to you. Cars in the future will be pretty smart about that, too. Yeah, you'll be able to tell your car, like, take me home, go here, go there, anything, and it'll just do it. Now and, you guys and, yeah, at an order of magnitude safer than a person. Mm -hmm. and in fact, in the distant future, I think it's probably going to be, it, it, people may outlaw driving cars mm -hmm. uh, because it's too dangerous. Like, you, c you can't have a person driving a two-ton death machine. Now, if we, if we have the right type of intelligence in a car, we, we also don't have to make the cars that heavy. I would think. You know, cars are getting yeah. heavier and heavier and it's got more and more stuff in it because it needs to survive all these incredible collisions and things like that. If, I wonder if, if we were to, to, to design cars that, that just simply don't collide as much, um, I wonder if we could, we could uh, relax on some of those laws and, and yeah. make cars more fuel efficient and lighter and better to drive. You could definitely do that. If you could count on not, a not having an accident, then you can uh, get, get rid of a huge amount of the crash structure and the airbags. And uh, it'll be, we're a long way from that because there's always going to be some, for, for a very long time, there'll be some amount of legacy cars on the road. And, and I think it, it is important to just appreciate uh, the size of the automotive industrial base. Like, it's not as though like, when somebody makes an autonomous car that suddenly all the cars will be autonomous. It's like there's two billion of them. Okay, so the total number of cars and trucks on the road is, is two billion and climbing. Capacity of car and truck production is about 100 million a year. So if tomorrow all cars were autonomous, it would take 20 years to replace the fleet, assuming the fleet stayed the same size. Arguably, it could get smaller if things are autonomous. It, and it, it's still, you know, maybe 15 years or something. And it's not all going to transition immediately. It'll take quite a while. And it's the same for electrification of cars. It, changing that industrial base to be electric, I mean, if, if, if all cars were suddenly, if all cars produced were electric tomorrow, it would still take 20 years to replace the, the fleet. And right now it's less than 1%. You mentioned just now about, about self-driving cars being easier than people think. Now, you, you have a, your vision of, of how to go from where we are today. Now, my model, my P85D, has uh, lane detection, and, and so it gets a little bzzz, you know, when I get close to a to a lane, yep. uh, it detects the uh, the speed signs, and it uses a uses um, a computer vision technology to do that. And but and that's today's ADAS. What is your what is your roadmap? You know, how is that different than other people's roadmap? How do you think about how to get to self driving cars? You kind of need the, the the hardware foundation, the sort of sensor and computing foundation, and then you can keep 
uploading new software, at least you can with a Tesla because it's, it, it's always connected. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the car that you have, you'll notice like it, it's the, the features are st steadily improving. We now you know, have uh, active cruise control, so it'll, it'll use uh, radar and camera fusion to track the car in front of you. Um, it's also looking at s some things that are coming out. It's got, it, it looks at the brake lights, so it anticipates that the car's got the brake lights are active. Um, it's going to get basically smarter and smarter even with the current hardware suite. So the current hardware suite is 360 degree ultrasonic sensors that go up to about uh, just over five meters. It's a Ford camera and a Ford radar. So we'll, we'll make, even with just, just that sensor suite, we can actually make a huge progress in autonomy. Mm. We can certainly make the car steer itself on, on a, a freeway and you know, do lane changes. Um, it, it's really, autonomy is about what level of reliability and safety uh, do you want? Even with the current sensor suite, we could make the car go fully autonomous, but only to, but, but not to a level of reliability that would be safe in, say, a um, complex uh, urban environment at 30 miles an hour where the lane markings aren't there and mm -hmm. children could be playing um, and things could be coming at you from the side. So in order to solve that, you need a, a, a bigger sensor suite and you need more computing power. And I think what you're doing actually with uh, the Tegras in the future is, is super interesting and will really be a big enabler uh, for autonomous driving. So I think you know, we're, we're, NVIDIA is doing really great stuff on that front. I appreciate that. Yeah. And so some of the challenges that you see, what are some of the technological hurdles that, and you know, there's all kinds of researchers in the room, there are all kinds of engineers in the room. What are, some, what are some of the technological hurdles that you think are really important for us to go tackle? Um, surely surely uh, we're going to get to uh, some better cruise controls on highways. But b oh, beyond control, that, what are yeah. some of the things that you would like us to go focus on to tackle for the car industry? You know, where it gets tricky is, is just the, um, is, is that sort of urban environment around 30 or 40 miles an hour. So, so like right, right now, it's, it's fairly easy to deal with, say, things that are uh, sub five to 10 miles an hour because we can do that, do that with the ultrasonics. Mm -hmm. We just make sure it doesn't hit anything, you know, because you can always- Which is the right thing to do, largely. Yeah, like, yeah. Why would you want to hit anything with your car? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so at, at five to 10 miles an hour, you can stop uh, within the range of the ultrasonics. Then uh, from, let's say, 10 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour, that, 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 that area in complex um, suburban environments, that's, that's where you can get a lot of unexpected things happening. Mm -hmm. Like let's say there's a, like a road closure or a manhole cover open, children playing is a big issue, uh, bicycles. Mm -hmm. um, once you get above 50 miles an hour and you're in kind of a freeway environment, then it also gets easier again. Mm -hmm. Like the, right. the, 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 the set of possibilities is much reduced. Mm -hmm. um, so like, so hi highway cruise is easy, low speed is easy, intermediate is hard. And so being able to recognize what, what you're seeing and make uh, the right decision in, in the suburban environment in that 10, 10 miles an hour to 50 mile an hour zone is, is the challenging portion. Mm -hmm. but, but I really think like, it's, I mean, I, I almost, this may sound a little complacent, but I almost view it as like a solved problem. Mm -hmm. Like we know exactly what to do mm -hmm. and we'll be there in a few years. Mm -hmm. Right, um, just, just like Mars. <laughs> but that's that's Mars kind of quite that's, kind of, um, <laughs> that's kind of the the, the, the spirit of, of innovators. I mean, in a, in a lot of ways, in your mind, you kind of you kind of see things solvable, um, or arguably arguably solved, and, and um, a lot of it is is really about getting there. Yeah, we'll take autonomous cars for granted mm -hmm. in, in quite a short period of time. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how comfortable you get and how quickly you get comfortable with mm -hmm. it. Now, what about government? Yeah. government policies. Like one of the things that I would like to do is I would I would just like to keep working on my email as I'm driving to work. Sure. You know, there's there's a thirty so some people do that already. <laughs> 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 like I said, I, I would like to do it without without uh, without breaking the law. Oh, yes. uh, okay. uh, so so where <laughs> where where do you where, where do you think government intervention falls in, in some of this stuff? Because you know obviously if your car drives by itself and it does it even better than people, mm -hmm. you would like it to drive by itself. But largely the laws don't allow you to do that today. Right. Absolutely. So how do we cross that bridge? And, and, and how do you think about government intervention regulations? From the point at which a car is definitely safer than a person. There's probably at least another two or three years after that before regulators will allow that to be the case because they will want to see a large amount of statistical proof that it's not merely as safe as a person but much safer. Mm -hmm. So I think what you can do is you can run, run it in shadow mode and essentially say, okay, this is, this is what the computer would have done in all these circumstances. Mm -hmm. And was there a crash or was there not? Like what are the false positives, false negatives? Mm -hmm. And then it's achieve a, a large population group 
and then and then make a really clear statistical argument uh, with the regulators, and then they're going to digest that, observe it for a while, see if they agree with it, and and then I think they will because the evidence will be overwhelming. Yeah. And the evidence is actually already ver quite overwhelming. If you uh, would, have s would have noticed a uh, brake light in front of you on the highway and you didn't uh, crash into a rear-end collision, right. so a lot of sa lives are safe. You know, ideally, ideally, hopefully, um, people don't don't overreact with this with this unknown technology and prematurely regulate. No premature yeah. regulations. If well, you I mean, regu regulate. That was a joke. Or, haha. <laughs> 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 I think. When, when it comes to public safety, I think there's there's an argument for being, you know, quite cautious and mm -hmm. and making sure that things are okay before before there's a change. And um, I mean, I, I don't think it's the case that right now there's a fully autonomous system and regulators are not approving it. Mm -hmm. uh, that 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 could really be a substitute for people, but there will be in a few years. Now, as we get more computerized technology into these cars, and this car becomes really a software-defined car. I mean, a lot of your engineers are software engineers. I mean, that's yeah, one, of the, absolutely. one of the great things about Tesla. You guys, right here in, in Silicon Valley, you're rich with software engineers, and, and you have that you've that computer sensibility about architecting a computer properly, designing the software properly designing the software for many generations of cars so it refines and gets better and better. And it has been getting better. I mean, the software yeah. from the first time you sent me my Tesla to the now, it's just like it's right. unrecognizable software. Right. Big, right? Big, big improvements. I mean, that, that's why the first thing we try to do is establish the, the hardware platform, make sure that we have the, the sensors and compute power. Uh -huh. um, and, and so we do that first, even though the software is only taking advantage of a small percentage of the sensors and compute power. Um, and then we, we do uh, continuous updates uh, to make the car more and more capable. Um, and we're going to see a lot of that happen later this year. It's, it's if I didn't have an announcement on Thursday morning, I would be saying a lot more. But <laughs> the audience doesn't understand why they have to wait until Thursday morning. You tweeted it already. You, you're announcing you're going to do an OTA. What kind of announcement is that? I'm going to do an OTA on, on Thursday. That's like a well, new product announcement these days. It's just, it's just that, well, it's just saying that there's going to be a call on Thursday morning and I'll describe what's going to be in version 6.2 uh -huh. for anyone who's interested. That's so awesome, though. I'm interested. I, I get excited every time I get an OTA. And, and it's, you know, one of the things that was really interesting is in the beginning when we first built the first Tesla together, the Tegra in it, we thought was more than enough. And recently you said, can we just squeeze more performance out of that platform? And it just right. happened in literally two years. You know, several versions of your software updates, all of a sudden the computing platform is not powerful enough. Right. And, and it's because you want to add more features, and a lot of yep. features these days are based on software. So um, uh, w one last question. It has to do with, I guess, uh, something that um, a lot of people are very concerned about, which is your car becomes a software platform, and software platforms get hacked. How do you think about that? How do you think about security, and what are some of the things that we could do to try to make make uh, make the car more resilient to to uh, security attacks. Yeah, I think that that becomes really important when the cars um, are fully autonomous. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the way the cars work right now, every system in the car, it's assumed could actually have a mechanical failure of some kind or, or a logic failure, a fundamental logic failure. So you can always overwhelm the, the, the braking of the car with your foot and you can overwhelm the steering wheel with your hands. But, but when, when there isn't a steering wheel, or there isn't you know, a brake pedal or something in the, the many years from now, th then it's really, th really dangerous. You know, cause, uh, but even as it is right now, th what we spend most of our time on is making sure that it's, it's very difficult to do um, a multi-car hack. Like if you have direct access to a car, just like if you've got direct access to a computer or, or any, even a conventional car, you can do a lot of things to it. But, but that, that's less of a concern than somebody being able to hack an arbitrary car or multiple cars. So that's what we, we focus our energy on is making sure that that, in, in that way, it's, it's, it's a lot like a, like a cell phone or, or a laptop. You, you, you focus on making sure that they can't, they can't or that it's very difficult for there to be any kind of system-wide hack. So we put a lot of effort into that, and we have third parties try to attack it. And, and then certain parts of the, the car at, at the very fundamental level, like the drive unit controller uh, or the steering controller, have a, an additional level of security. So somebody may be able to ha hack something that's uh, cosmetic, but it's much harder to hack something that's, that's actually physically dangerous. Mm -hmm. there's, there's multiple levels mm -hmm. of security. Yeah, and so this way, if you, if you were to able to penetrate maybe the infotainment system, it doesn't allow yeah, you quickly exactly. as a result of that Right. right. I mean, it may display a funny message or something, but it would not, you would not be able to then control the steering or the, the motor. Yeah. Well, the future uh, of cars is so exciting, and the work that you guys are doing are so exciting, and it's, it's, it's great to see you guys pioneering um, these computerized cars. I mean, a lot of people think about, think about Tesla as the electric car, 
And I, but I think it's obviously more than that. It's an electric car, but yeah. it's, it's a whole computer platform on top of that. Yeah, I think, I think Tesla's, I mean, Tesla's sort of the leader in electric cars, but I think we'll also sort of be the leader in autonomous uh, cars, at least autonomous cars that people can buy. Mm -hmm. um, and and we're, we're, so we're, we're, I mean, if there's anybody who's interested in working on autonomous cars, we'd love to have you work at Tesla, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're, we're going to put a lot of effort into uh, automotive, uh, aut autonomous driving, because uh -huh. uh, it's just going to be the, the default thing. Yeah, um, and it could save a lot of lives. Yeah, to uh, save a lot of lives, and hopefully, hopefully one of these days, I could, it would be nice if Nvidia's campus has no parking lot. Yeah, right. That it drops us off and it meanders off to a place where the the land's a little cheaper, and you know, and parks a whole bunch of cars there. And and when it's time to go home, we yeah, you know, summon it, it to come. It, it will be extremely transformative, that's mm -hmm. for sure. But yeah, I mean, when it comes to AI, I'm not really worried about sort of narrow, narrow AI like like autonomous cars or like you know a, a smart air conditioning unit at, at the house or mm -hmm. something. It's more like sort of the deep intelligence mm -hmm. stuff that mm -hmm. uh, is where we need to be cautious. Mm -hmm. like, I actually think there's many potential flavors of AI and you know, we're, it, it's odd that we're, at, we're so close to the advent of AI. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it seems strange that we'd be alive in this, in this time. Well, come back every year. Come yeah. back every year and you'll see the, the, the work that this, this uh, group is gonna do. I mean, there's so much deep learning work being done here. Uh, you, have, you have a lot of engineers here as well, and I, they're, they're, uh, it's fantastic to see the, the, the whole community focused on advancing this field. And along the way, we're going to spin off a whole bunch of new capabilities, as you know, that's going to make cars just safer and more fun to drive um, long before we have to get to, to essentially a self-driving car. Right. There's going to be a lot of versions along the way that's just going to bring joy to a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. I just hope there's something left for us humans to do. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to let, <laughs> let go of my steering wheel. You know, I've got mine on, right. on the craziness mode and it's the sports mode, yeah. steering mode. Uh, uh, is that the way you have it? Um, How do you, I, you, you get driven to work now. No, no I, uh, well, I, I drive half the time, actually. And which mode do you have it in? I always have it in insane mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Elon, thank you. All right.